Yeah, inside live here inside Hydro Music Films. It's your host, Big Riff, and we got Master Chris Lewis in the spot right now. And the reason why we was listening to that MJ track, rest in peace to MJ, by the way, the reason why we was listening to that track is because it's something that actually needs to be shared you know, with the world about the originator of music when it comes to being what is called an Arthur. You know, when it comes to your publishing and different stuff like that, the writer of the music and, you know, Master Chris is the type of person that uh, he's a hard worker. Am I right, Master Chris? Yeah, man. He's a hard worker and um, Ever since. he's a uh, strong Garifuna artist. You know, he does Punta and Paranda music, and he's also, his stomping grounds used to be in what part of New York? Man, even before that, man, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, even right? Before, yeah, Brooklyn, the Bronx, man. All right. Wait, wait, you just, when you said Punta and Paranda, Hugu Hugu Gunjai. All right. Um, reggae. Yes. Rock and roll. He does everything. Souls. Soul. Correct. Yeah. All right. Correct. Yeah, even though hip hop, you know? Correct. Trip hop, all that. I just do do every country and western, all that, man. So it's like when I release an album, it has like so many different, you know, even protest songs I do and all that. Okay. But um, the thing is that, man, 1989, you had Desert Shield before Desert Storm. And man, that like made me go deep. Going so deep for this tune, right? Tune named What About Us. See? I was writing the song and it was like the first, when I was writing the, the chorus, the first, the first two lines, I was saying, What about me? And then, like, okay. I said to myself, This is freaking egotistic. Right. I can't just think about me in this world if another nuclear mishap occurs. Or if another, you know, like another Chernobyl, because Chernobyl had occurred. And then, you know, if another big world war, another big war, like, you know, because then, you know, putting 530,000 U.S. troops upon that soil to go and, you know, make another war, that's a half a million men, over half a million men. So it's another big war. So what if they would use nuclear weapons and then different things, you know, so all that went up to my brain. So it was like. Okay. So I just reached, I had just arrived in America at that time, that was 89. Then, you know, I was like, man, I was just like heartbroken about so many things because of leaving my young children here in Belize and then going, you know, being there in America, you know, it's like, and then if this occurs, I can't be with my entire family, so boom, you know, so I was like, what about us? 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 Then I repeat that again, right? Okay, so whatever you know, you had actually it, recorded I, a track like yes, that, right? You that's what you was telling me, right? Because I recorded it and I copy wrote it. All right, to the Library of Congress. Okay, and you told me you I mentioned. Had, something to me about cbs tell tell me a little bit more about that cbs story though oh i had made i had made 15 cassettes you know on our next when we interview next i'll have the cassettes and i, I had the one cassette that's left out of 15. okay because i gave the 15 out uh somebody uh 42nd and broadway in new york and some I went personal to CBS and gave one to Miss Alberta Walker. Okay. And she was in charge of A and R and accounts. Okay. This is in downtown Brooklyn. And she directed me to a tall, dark rasta young man who was, you know, about thirty five, who was behind the boards. It was the biggest um biggest mixing board I ever saw in my life up to that point. Okay. About a hundred tracks, man. Shit was so, you know, humongous. You know, especially you now I came from this small country, you know, we just saw four track recorders and stuff at that Correct. time. Man, you see a hundred track, you like blown out. Correct, it blows your mind. Yeah, you was like. So, 
at this time you was yeah. mentioning to me earlier that Michael Jackson was actually under CBS at this time when your yeah when your yeah. demo was presented to her. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. And because I had recorded, I had recorded in '89. You know, I wrote it in July, and by October, November of that same '89, I had recorded it, and then same time, I I released my first album May. 1991 but I, I did not put that on there although I had done 15 songs I just used eight of the 15 songs that was one of that was actually the last song that I scratched off okay. due to the fact that after the first 30 minutes the first 30 seconds the bass line would go a little a tad slower than the way than then my singing okay in this time mu and, and how music is this time that would be another style correct you know, but in that, in that time, people would be like, no, you know, I'd say first, third, second, you don't want someone to drop your music, so I took that off. Okay. You know, but I had copywritten that with the collection, you know, Master Crystal was music. I have volume one, volume two, volume three, and volume four, but that was on volume one and volume two. Those are what those first 15 songs were on, you know. And um, what occurred, I was living in Brooklyn at that time, 20s. You know, I, you know, I won't say my address on this, but you know, <laughs> I was living, you know, at, you know, I want to say, you know, in Brooklyn, because then I lived in the Bronx for a little bit, but that was about six months. Okay. All my other 10 years, man, Brooklyn, man, the BK, the BK. All right. Brooklyn Zoo. All right. You know, I'm not throwing nothing in nobody's faces, because, you know, yeah. at the same time, I'd be doing LA, Chicago, doing gigs and everything playing in so many bands and different things, you know. But the thing is, coming back to what we were talking about, I went deep and far for that song, you know. And then, you know, the thing is that the guy was presented with this and didn't steal. He didn't, they didn't get back to me. I left my number. And my number is, the last cassette has my phone number and everything on there, my address and everything on there. But I, when, when I show it though, I don't want to show the world all of that though. But, Correct. But I could do that too, if you know, but it, I don't want so to. It's just, it's just basically proof that yeah. the song that you wrote yeah. um, is basically similar to the Earth song that Michael Jackson put up. Man, and when, when the it world, is it is the song, when right? When the world hears them, man, when the world will know. Because then the guy just moves, substitute some of the words from the word about us you know, instead of saying, what about, you know, like when I say, when another d nuclear disaster occurs, you know, because then I was thinking about Chernobyl. So I was like, man, and then remember, we had already had in 1987 that the, the sky rocket, that the rocket exploded with the seven, you know, the first teacher going up in space and all that. So all those things were fresh in my brain, in my mind, you know, I was like, man, and every so, so many countries now have nuclear weapons, you know. So, you know, I'm a peace activist, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, I've been like all through the mills, being a cop, being a soldier, being the youngest custom officer at 18 in this country and everything. But the point is, man, I play things fair, you know. The least that could have been said was that, okay, this, that, that, and okay, share world, world is 50-50 or whatever. Correct. It's not you a know? problem. You don't see a problem with him I don't have a problem. using the song. It's just how I they don't. went about it. Yes. No consultation yes. whatsoever. I left my phone number. I left my address. You know, I left everything. And I even checked them back. Nobody told me nothing. You know? Because I, I saw one of the guys from there in the streets one day again and I asked him, he told him none. So, you know, after that, you know. But but then I still had the same phone number and I still had the same address for years after that. Like three, four years after that. Nobody get back to me. The next thing, I was working at the Morgan Library at 20 East, uh, 29 East 36th Street, Manhattan, Midtown. Right? Man. Devastated me when Ray Kuzi, one of my, you know, Caucasian, um, you know, buddies on the job, you know, he was like, Master Chris, the same songs 
that you made me hear that you told me it didn't release because of the, the bass was a tad slower I said that's your song he said but listen to it for yourself buy you a copy of his story a history telling that was the album that had on two that had two CDs and it's on you know and then again man and then pains me more I couldn't even hear this I couldn't even every time I would hear a song playing the malls and then I just like get out of the mall yeah leave well nobody knows a real Arthur yeah it, you're it, the real person who wrote that song yeah but yes but at the same time too I didn't want to hear it because it was like too painful for me man Correct. you know not getting paid your publishing but they did not know that I had copywritten my stuff that's what they did not know prior to me releasing okay and prior to me even taking it around as a demo okay I had copywritten my stuff okay so basically your intellectual property that you have is for the life of the Arthur that's your song for the not, life not basically it is it is yeah. which I'm not you know I would not you know feel bad sharing 50 50 with Michael and his people but I need me and my people need our fair share actually we should be getting at least 51 percent because I'm the originator without me it would not it would not have been I gotta thank him though so posthumously and you know and to everybody that you know his peoples and stuff for you know having taken the song to the other levels I will not say to another level because then I gotta respect him on that because man all that video everything looks nice and stuff it's what I, I envisioned all that but I didn't have the money to you know do all those things and whatever I was an artist who was just making sure that Belize and you know the artists from here and you know are put that we are put on the map correct and not in any negative forms and stuff in positive forms because we have very much arts artists here that that operate from the depths you know you live it you think it you do it constructively correct you know with love with peace with harmony passion, with unity man. yeah passion well passion has to be there if you're not passionate about what you do my brother don't even start don't even think it right and then you have to conceive or perceive perceive to conceive to in the actualization in doing so it's like man I, i'm telling you man you know how painful and painful for the rasta well, you know that man that time it's like going back to what i'm talking about man you know I'm not going to say it like in a way like I'm better than anyone or whatever, whatever. But I was always a trailblazer because I write poetry, two books of poetry, all that, all that. Also a producer because I, you know, executive producer and then I had my people that I would take into, you know, because I know this guy, um, um, Joseph P. Serling. He was our lawyer because I'm a member of BMI from 19 when I, when I, you know, well, when I released my first album. Uh, I went to BMI with it April, April 1st, 1991, and I became a member then. And I released the album May 20th, 1991. And that's the same album that I omitted the song What About Us, which Michael Jackson brought back out and said is a Earth song. Correct, he changed it. You know, the name, the name, even the melody, even the melody. The basis of the melody is mine. The harmonies, you, 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 when you hear the stuff, it's just that they're played and slight different delay inside different stuff, inside different pitch changes here and there. And you know, little changes here and there, little abridgments to try to, you know, color and, and hide certain things and let it come to, you know, you know. But, but the, the point is, at the end of the day, if I did not make that song, Earth Song would not have existed. Correct. And Earth Song is not his song. It may partially be his. Yes. But it's not his song. The original composer, arranger, and everything is me. Christopher John Lewis, a.k.a. Master Chris Lewis. You know? did New York 10 years LA 4 years New York 2 more 
in between all that Chicago, Atlanta, you know, uh, every place in between, playing music. The ball band. You're a veteran, man. Yeah, man, so many bands. I even forgot you actually, all the names. You have a catalog, you know, but... I got 16 albums, 18 albums. I forgot how many in that category. And when then we lost another seven albums. I left 700 songs in New York, 700 in L.A. With my people's over there. Some of my people's dead. Some of those songs gone with them. You know, but you know what? When you go far and deep for a song, the way I went for this song, cold, you know, I couldn't even get myself content to have this interview until now, so many years later. Yeah, I've been knowing about this for a while. You bet. Every time I meet yeah. you, it's funny because today we found we found your IPI <laughs> on the on 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 BMI and yeah, it, BMI. And you were so excited to see that your songs was uploaded, and you said that was from what nineteen what. 1991, man. All right. And 1992. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah, these little grades are not for nothing, man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, what we going to do is. Uh, and we sing in English. We sing in broken English, which is Creole. We sing in Garifuna, which is our first native and everything language. We sing in some Spanish. And, you know, hey, we never finish the line of other things. Well, the world gonna hear more from you, Chris, because yeah. uh, I'm gonna make sure that, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna make sure that yourself, because we're about to start working on something that we were talking about today. I'm Me. the bulkest man in Who Is Who, man. It's okay, though, man. Bulkest man. We gonna we gonna recollect all of that back. We gotta get that back. But not broke like that. Yeah, all right. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what, man? Real and true. I thank Michael for doing a little, you know, you know, because then on my own, I couldn't publish like that. I didn't have those connections like that. So, you know, it's like, and then, but man. Rest in peace, MJ. Rest in peace, MJ. But then when I say again, my song on two more album again, man, King of the Dance Floor. And, and. Top 20, 20 number ones, number ones or something. And we released it. Man, justice has to be done, man. And out of it, I'm telling you straight, I will help my buddies and people too. Cool. It's not just about me, it's about us. That's why I made that song, because I was thinking about the world. What will happen to the world? Just like now. It's again upon us again, nuclear disaster. A nuclear whatever mishap could easily happen. Look at the presidents of the world. Look at the leader of America, China. Look at the leader of Russia. Russia just say if he's tap, if he's communication with America. Come on, why is it? Why is it? No preamble, man. Do not preamble. Let's not prejudge anyone of the world. Let's give everyone their fair chance and fair time. Some of what people say are rhetorics just to get them to where they want to go, which I don't see as right. But then that's my opinion. Correct, correct. You're a very intelligent person. That's what a lot of people don't know about you, Chris. <laughs> Master Chris Lewis, y'all. Yeah. Coming to you live from Hydro TV. Big riff, you know. We're about to come back. We're gonna get back to you on episode number two, right, Master Chris? Yeah. And yeah. he gonna have copies of the original cassette with the song on there. And of what I had written. What I had the lyrics. Because I wrote those lyrics before I went to the studio. Normally sometimes I just leave lyrics on the side and make a song on the spot. But that one I went deep and far, man. You actually sat down. What? Yeah. Shit. I cried when I made that song. I cried when I did it in the studio, when I performed in the studio. I cried when, when I, man. Then, when he made the song, when he, then I he still cried off. again. He I cried again. He, because it's like, man. He's it's feeding crazy, off of your emotions. Man. It's crazy, It's like man. feeding it's off crazy, of your emotions. Because then, you know, those 530,000 troops. Remember, it took them six months. To get these troops there they started this build up like about november 88 
and finish it about March or whatever. You know, but it's six months space of time, October to maybe uh, maybe April. Then after that, see, it's in that time. I was like, man, shit. July, 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 this is before the war, the war is just about to run the time. I was like, and I just, and I recorded it, like, the day after I wrote it, the day after I wrote it. Right away. I skipped so many of the hundreds of songs that I had there, man. To go and do that one. Because then message had to be, had to come to the world, just like the song I have about World Trade Center. I released that. But, no, but hardly anyone knows about that song. Because I don't have the publishing like that at this time. Oh, not well. Well, now we have a different. You know, now now we you know to the world now. Mm -hmm. You know, you not know, starting that. You know, but at that time, man, I was a lonely. I was a you know. I was a how you call did it? You ever blazer, man. Did you ever record the song World Trade Center? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never released it though. Released it. I oh, did. you did. Okay. Yeah. The only thing is that, like what I said, when you release an album and you make a thousand copies, or two, three thousand copies, it's only for two, three thousand people. Now certain DJs get that and you know, whatever, whatever, then you know, you get, you make some money. So then, you know, a certain radio station, so we go to the radio stations too. Mm -hmm. But we were limited in the scope of the stations we could, we could have covered. Okay. Because we don't just do, uh, we do Punta Paranda and stuff, which is like singing in, which is singing in Garifuna. You know, like in Garifuna, for example, Ida Biangi, that's like, how, that's how are you? <coughs>